Hey everyone, it's Natasha. Welcome back to my channel. And I am working on Thanksgiving prep and I thought I'd bring along all of you to see what, how I do some of my pre-Thanksgiving work. Um, yes, this is my bird. Yes, it's going in the roaster today. This is a 19 pound turkey. I think I showed it all to you on my Kroger haul video. I got it for 49 cents a pound, amazing deal. So the day I bought it, I put it in the refrigerator. It's been thawing. He's perfectly thawed and ready to go. I took out the giblets, I took out the uh, neck, took out the gravy packet. So if you're new to doing birds, make sure that's the number one tip. Take out all the stuff on the inside before you get ready to cook him. So I am getting ready to do the stuffing. Yes, I do put stuffing in the bird. Yes, I do do a batch that's not in the bird. I know some people don't agree with putting them in the bird. And what I'm gonna tell you is what my daughter likes to say is you do you boo boo, it's your kitchen. If you don't wanna put stuffing in your bird, don't put stuffing in your bird. If you wanna serve it on the side, that's fine. I don't care what you do, but I do both. So we have an option. I do the stuffing exactly like my grandma did it. I do the bird like my grandma did it. Only she did hers in the oven. I do mine in the roaster just because it keeps my oven free for other things. So the stuffing, I use the exact same stuffing that she did. It was funny when I grew up and I got married and I started doing different um, things that she had done over the years for Thanksgiving and different things. Um, I tried to replicate and I kept looking for like certain gravies and trying all these different recipes and certain stuffings and everything. Come to find out she did a lot of shortcuts and that's not necessarily a bad thing because we had huge Thanksgivings every year but it made all of a sudden made my life easier. Like I kept thinking her gravy was made from scratch. No, she used the gravy packet that came with the bird, extended it with the gravy drippings and turkey broth. That was all. I'm like, yay, it makes it so much easier. She used, the she used the brown berry premium stuffing sage and onion mix. That's what I'm gonna use. I'm doing it exactly like she did. I'll bring you along while I do that. And then um, I'm working on my deviled eggs. I have um, this many already done and I've got another few here. So hold on, I'm gonna bring you back and we'll get started on the stuffing. Okay, so here is the butter. I melted one and a half six just like the package of brown berry stuffing mix said to do. And I just added a package of our Miracroix blend. Um, I showed you that the other day that I like to dehydrate that to have in my food storage, but this is from the freezer. So I'm going to add that with my butter. We're gonna go ahead and saute that up. And that's going to be added into our stuffing mixture. I also like to add a little bit of poultry seasoning. I know the seasoning mix is flavored, but I like to add a little bit more. We like flavor in our food. So there's the the poultry mix. I'm going to go ahead and let that Miracroix blend saute and then I'll bring you back when we're ready to add everything to our stuffing mix. Okay, so I've got my Miracroix all sauteed up. I also added some Tastely Simple spinach and herb seasoning, about two tablespoons of that. I'm going to add, it. the package calls for a cup and a half of water in the stuffing that's not going to work it's thanksgiving it's got to taste amazing so i used um two cups of my home canned turkey broth i did that showed you all that in the video last month so you can look for that under my channel playlist so i'm going to add that turkey broth and then i'm going to let that come back up to a boil and then we're going to go ahead and pour that into our stuffing get our stuffing nice and mixed up and get ready to go in the bird so Hang on, I will bring you back in a few minutes. Okay, so the turkey broth and butter and Miracroix blend along with the seasonings have come to a boil. So we're gonna take this over here and pour it on our stuffing mix. Now grandma added giblets to hers, and I do do that sometimes, but because I don't know what everybody's tastes are that are coming for Thanksgiving this year, I'm not going to add the giblets to the actual stuffing. Not this time. I'll just use them in my homemade dog food for the week. The dogs will think they've died and gone to heaven. It tastes really good. So we're going to bring that, we're going to mix that all up so it's nice and moistened. Now, if it's not moist enough, 
I will go ahead. I brought over another jar of turkey broth. That's why you need to have a lot of turkey broth on hand so that you can use it all because you want it really moist to go inside that bird. Sorry, you're steaming up. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to stick you on the tripod so you can all watch how I stuff the bird with the seasoning. So hold on. Okay, so I did end up adding more turkey broth to my stuffing. I had about this much of another jar because it wasn't moist enough. So now I'm going to go ahead and stuff this in the bird. And yes, I use my hands. It's the easiest way. Now, do not stuff it super, super tight because that's what they talk about, not being able to get the heat all the way through and then cooking. And you end up with... Um, salmonella and different poisonings because your bird doesn't get cooked all the way through. That's another reason why I like to start it the night before. There's not pressure to get it done and on the table at a certain time. I will cook it until the internal temperature reaches 100 and I think it's 65. I'll have to look it up again. I forget every year. Um, 165 degrees and then I will take it out of the oven. And what another thing too, what I'll do is when I take it out or take it out of the roaster pan, I will take the stuffing out of the bird and then I will put it in a um, casserole dish. And then tomorrow, I will heat it back up in the oven. So it's going to get heated through twice. So there's not going to be any worry of it not getting cooked all the way through. So that's enough for the cavity. And then I'm going to stick some here in the neck. Now don't forget there is the neck empty cavity of the bird. It doesn't hold as much. But it still holds some stuffing. And you can let it fall out of the bird a little bit because like I said you're going to gather all that up and put it in a, a cooking dish. So what I do is I usually just let it fall on the sides of the legs here. And that stuff gets really nice and crispy and that's the best part of the stuffing in my opinion. Okay, now we just need to prep the bird. Um, what I do is I take a and quarter an orange now you're going to say I'm going to layer the flavors of quarter and orange, and then I cut up a onion, a yellow onion, and I layer all this around the bird, and then I pour the, I'm going to pour the remainder of this broth in here, so it has a little liquid, and then I'll take a stick of butter. And I'll go ahead and put some of that under the skin on the breast. Yes, you got to get your hands in there. You got to loosen the skin up. I know this is a struggle for a lot of people that don't like to touch raw poultry, but it is what it is. And then I shove butter underneath skin Layer some on top, and then I've got another half stick of butter here. Pick it up. I'm going to cook down over the bird. Let's go to this neck flesh. Okay. Now I'm going to pour on the seasonings. I'll grab a paper towel. Just 
just so I don't get all that raw poultry on my seasoning jar. And this is Tastefully Simple Citric Citrus Herb Seasoning. It has dehydrated vegetables, onion, garlic, carrot, red bell pepper, tomato, salt, spices, orange peel, lemon peel, and garlic oil. This stuff is amazing. And that'll layer the flavor of those oranges that I already put on there. Okay, and there you have it. There is the bird. That bird's gonna go in there for about four and a half hours, and then we'll check the temperature and see if it's done. So it releases a lot of pressure from Thanksgiving Day by doing it this way. So I will bring you back when we are ready to do our deviled eggs. So okay, I am back and it's time to make the deviled eggs. Now I went ahead and cut the deviled eggs up because you know, those people like to hate on my knife cutting skills. Guess what? I'm not a professional. I'm a mom. Um, I didn't want to give them more fodder for their comments. So I went ahead and I cut up the deviled eggs. I did 25 boiled eggs, so they ended up with 50 deviled eggs, which is about a... You, I mean, I, I've made upwards of 120 deviled eggs at one time. So um, I am famous for my deviled eggs. I'm always asked to bring them to every event. My deviled eggs are not what... <laughs> Um, not your mother's double eggs, actually my mother's double eggs and her mother's double eggs that's been handed down through generations. Um, we, what my mom always used to like to say is we like our eggs to come up and bite you back. They need to have some flavor to them. And a lot of people don't put flavor in the deviled eggs. They put mayo and a little bit of mustard and they think that's a deviled egg. I'm sorry, but that's not a deviled egg. That is just a kind of a boiled egg with a little bit of, I don't know, just, <laughs> they're not good. It's so funny when my family goes places and they will have, try a deviled egg that's not one of mine. I'm like, oh, that deviled egg was tasteless. And yeah, it pretty much is, but you got to remember they're used to the way I make my deviled eggs. So I went ahead and I did that. So I've got, um, the, in the yolk of 25 eggs. And what I do to save a bowl and to make it easy to put the filling in the eggs is I just mix everything up in a freezer bag amazing it saves all kinds of dishes that way so yes I will start with the mayo no I do not measure anything that is, the best cooks do not just saying I put it in until it looks right and so I start with my mayonnaise and I use real full fat mayonnaise because um, Miracle Whip has sugar in it and since my husband's diabetic he can't have sugar I add some vinegar and I'm going to put that in my jar of mustard because I want to use up the rest of this jar of mustard. So that's going to be make it so I'm able to get out the rest of the mustard. So there's your beginning and what a lot of people where, where they will stop and be like, nope, that's it. That's a, that's my deviled eggs. Well, that's not my deviled eggs. That's just the beginning of my deviled eggs. Okay, so there is my mustard and my vinegar. And then I add a few drops of hot sauce, whatever your favorite kind of hot sauce is. Make them as hot, you know, spicy as you like. I just add a few drops. And then I add in my celery seed. For this batch, it's probably about a teaspoon of celery seed. And then I add in my onion salt. Some people grate real onion in. I know um, one of my favorite bloggers, that's probably about a teaspoon of onion salt. She grates a fresh onion in hers, but we all know how my opinion, my husband's opinion is onions, so we gotta sneak them in wherever we can. Pickle relish. I use sweet pickle relish. You use whatever, if you prefer dill, use dill pickle relish, but I use sweet pickle relish. And that is, oh, I gotta add my Splenda. That gives you that sweet and sour effect. And I use Splenda because of course we can't use sugar. So hubby can eat them. Probably about two teaspoons to a tablespoon. I always taste it after I get mixed up because you have to adapt and adjust. 
So this is where it comes in handy and not having to uh, use the, uh, use the, dirty up a bunch of dishes. We're already making enough dishes for the holiday. We don't need to make dirty up any more of them. a real nice smooth texture to the deviled eggs. Okay, let me see where I'm at. It looks like the texture is perfect. Let me grab a spoon. Let's see how they taste. A little more, more sweet and sour to them. So I'm going to add a tad more Splenda. And I have a feeling since that was the end of my mustard that may not have been enough mustard. Let me grab some more mustard. Just horseradish mustard. I don't have any yellow mustard in the fridge, and I don't want to go dig it down in my pantry. Unless we could get it in that jar. All right, let's mix this up and see where we're at. clean spoon. Mm, perfect. Perfect, perfect. That's why I say it's a taste thing. And since I don't measure, I just make sure what I know my family likes. Okay, so it's all mixed up. I just take and cut the corner off of the end of my mixing bag. And I'll move it over here. Hopefully you can see that. And start squirting in my filling. Y'all will have to leave it in the comments for me how you make your deviled eggs. If you like to add them, add enough things to them to make them stand up and bite you back. If you're famous for your deviled eggs, let me know how you make them. I know there's a gazillion different um, recipes out there and ways to make them. I've seen some really um, unique recipes. Um, I even saw one. You know how I made the pickled beets and eggs for you the other day? which are looking yummy in the fridge as we speak. Um, I saw one where they actually made, they went ahead and put their pickled egg, you know, they went ahead and put their pickled eggs in the brine, and then they made their deviled eggs with their pickled beet eggs. Now, I have never tried that, but I can't see how, if I don't, if I love pickled beets and eggs and deviled eggs, I can't see how it could be bad. It's got to be good. So maybe one of these times I'll get around to doing that and we'll we'll test it out and see what we think about it. Okay, and now I've got a few extra here. I always make a few extra because the family likes to taste test them for me. So I got six extra here that don't fit in the doubled egg container. That's for the family. And then I sprinkle with paprika. Some people sprinkle with parsley. Some people sprinkle with chives. I'm traditional in that sense. Um, I use paprika. One year I forgot, and our company came for Thanksgiving. They're like, why are your eggs naked? I forgot to sprinkle them with paprika. I don't know that it really affects the taste that much, but they just look pretty. 
All right, there are my 50 deviled eggs all ready for Thanksgiving. Yum, everybody will be happy. Okay, so that that is the turkey, the stuffing, and the deviled eggs. I still have to do dinner rolls, homemade uh, whipped cream, and pumpkin pie. And it is almost six o'clock here, so hopefully I'll be done by about 10 o'clock. I sent my daughter out to get dinner because I'm not cooking, because we are baking and we are cooking, and that is not that is enough work for one night. So anyway. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, leave them below, and we will talk to you later, and happy Thanksgiving if I don't get on here and do another video tonight.